Hi everybody and welcome. Today we're gonna drop Dolores into the ocean for the first time. All the dockside testing is done. We're so excited to finally get her into the open water. So come along and join us. Dolores is a hybrid autonomous underwater vehicle. So that means she can go off on her own, be programmed in autonomous mode and survey and come back to us. Or we can plug a fiber optic tether into her and drive her with the joysticks and the control systems here like an ROV. Well, the great advantages is to give us the tools we need to go, one, go into deeper water. So it allows us to search like with Dolores down to over 3,000 feet. Um, and all the new the wrecks out there that are still missing, most of them are all in deeper water now. But it gives us a leg up on being very efficient because we could have Dolores out in autonomous mode doing these wide swath surveys while we're off checking targets with an ROV or divers. You know, so the efficiency goes up greatly when you start fielding multiple vehicles at the same time. And Dolores is our start there. Dolores has a lot of different systems and sensors that we use to go find treasure and shipwrecks. The first one is the forward-looking sonar. That tells us what's out in front of the vehicle. So when we go down, we can find a target on the seafloor and go up close to it. It's got about 200 feet range out in front of it. We've got side scan sonar. That gives us the wide swath sonar uh, image of the seafloor that we're looking for, about 1,000 meters wide. It will, it will go and survey the seafloor and give us that image so we can find our big targets. So instead of a towed system where you know, you're towing it with a cable and it can rock back and forth a lot, this, the AUV system is so rock solid and stable in the water that it shoots a really long beam. So it gives us much longer ranges. The advantage of having multiple systems on Dolores is during our side scan survey, we also have the magnetometer survey. And the mag will tell us whether we have iron or metal on the sea floor, which tells us whether side scan targets are geology or rocks on the, on the sea floor, or whether it's a shipwreck or man-made items. The beauty of Dolores is the inertial navigation system, and that system allows us to fly within centimeters of the sea floor and go real slow for like high resolution magnetometer surveys or other EM surveys that we're planning on doing in the future. The EM system we've been working on is phenomenal. We're working with a group that are developing the system that will go on the front of Dolores and it's basically like a large metal detector and it will pick up all metals and tell us what each target is, what kind of metal it is and how deep it is. This is the holy grail for the treasure hunting business to be able to go out and accurately pinpoint all metals that are in the seafloor to greater depths than we've ever been able to go before with like our handheld detectors. So this is an emerging technology with a, a new group. You know, they've been, they've been developing this and we're lucky enough to be partnering with them and, and work on the development and work at putting it on Dolores this year. The current metal detectors we're using now, the handheld units, we can see a, a silver bar probably two feet away down in the mud. You know, this should at least double our detection range. We're hopeful it will go a couple of meters. And that's, that's where we need to be, you know, to find the missing silver bars and silver coin chests on the Atocha Trail. But once we have the detector dialed in and, and, and on Dolores this year, we should be able to pinpoint every piece of silver and gold along that trail. Well, Dolores was developed for us to move into the future with, you know, for deeper shipwreck sites. We have quite a bit of work we can still do on the Atocha site with the new detectors and the EM systems we're developing. And that'll be great to find those other 350 silver bars and tens of thousands of silver coins. But her primary purpose is to like go after the lost merchant shipwreck and other deep water shipwrecks, you know, the, the next mother loads that we're looking for. See the small green cable? That's actually a fiber optic cable that attaches to the machine. It'll go down 1,000 meters, 3,300 feet, and control every system on that machine. It's just incredible. Of course, we can detach it and put her into AUV mode, and then she'll do her thing on her own as well. Uh, but just an amazing, amazing machine, and amazing that something so small can control every system on her. 
Here we have our uh, navigational system for Dolores. We've got the co-pilot and pilot station here. The main screen is the navigation screen. That's where you can see where Dolores is in latitude and longitude coordinates. And she'll leave a little trail on the screen as she moves around on the seafloor. You can see here the uh, pitch and roll of the vehicle, its, its attitude and how it's sitting in the water, what heading it's on, how deep it is, uh, the altitude above the bottom. All the details about the vehicle are shown here. And this is where you actually fly the vehicle from. Um, when we're in hybrid mode on the fiber, we can use this joystick and these controls to drive the vehicle or use the vehicle's autopilot to do station keeping or slowly move the vehicle around in strong currents and things. Um, we've got a view, kind of a Google Earth view map system here where you can zoom in and out and see the seafloor in kind of a three-dimensional mode. And this system is mirrored in a redundant system on the co-pilot station so that if one system fails, we have a full backup and redundant second system um, where the other one will take over, so we never lose control of the vehicle. Once division is over, we're going to go back into uh, finishing up Dolores' navigation systems and autopilots that we have to fine-tune, and then we're going to um, go offshore with her and actually let her stretch her legs out in some open water. It'll take about two weeks, and then we'll be heading north to the Lost Merchant site. And once we get to the Lost Merchant site uh, this summer, we're going to start diving the targets. We have so many targets from the last two years of survey. Now we have the capability with Dolores to go to start checking them, you know? Yeah, with Dolores, it'll be much more efficient checking targets than we could ever do with divers up there. This condition, strong current and zero visibility make it really difficult. So that'll speed things up quite a bit so we can really knock out the targets quickly. Once we get through all the targets, if we haven't found a lost merchant, we can roll into more survey with the new sonar and cover much more ground in the same time as we could before. Well, the purpose of multiple cameras on board Dolores, the forward camera obviously is your running camera so you can see what's ahead of you when you're driving and you're searching for targets. The downward camera is, is put on there so we can quickly do photo mosaics of a wreck site. Once we locate a site, we can just fly back and forth and shoot that video straight down with an aerial view and then mosaic it all together and have a site map within a matter of hours. Well, a site map gives us the ability to make a plan, a salvage plan, and see the wreck as a whole. So in this dark water and zero visibility or next to zero for a diver, you wouldn't be able to see very far. And with a mosaic, it'll give you a bird's eye view of the entire site in, in one view so we can strategically plan our recovery. Archaeologically speaking, it's key to have a site map and a photo mosaic because this gives you the original position of all the artifacts as you found them before anything was touched. So we can document the whole site as we found it and then systematically with our archaeologists start excavating through the site and recovering the artifacts. Computers behind me is the basically the nerve center for Dolores. We've got top side control system right here. That's the primary pilot control station system. And below it, we have the co-pilot control station. So if one fails, the other one takes over. Then here's our telepresence system. That's the system that connects Dolores' video to the internet and out to our Lost Merchant webpage. So everybody can watch, all our investors can watch live in real time what we're doing. You know, in these deeper projects, it's nice to have this capability so that you know, our investors can come along with us still, like they did on the Atocha site. You know, you can't dive in a thousand feet, but you can watch the video from the vehicle. As a Melfisher investor, you could be as far away as Quebec, Canada, while we're on the Lost Merchant site. And you could be logged into the computer and be part of the recovery of the Mother Loto Lost Merchant in real time. 